Hi, welcome back. Episode 135 of Chaotically Intolerant. We are a uh, big championship weekend. Sad championship sad. weekend. Very sad. Very sad indeed. Um, the, the Ravens go down pretty, I don't even know what to say, pretty ugly, I guess, is the right term. I'm glad that I'm I'm on uh, camera last week with my picks because actually at the last minute, you know, on my blog, I changed it, but then I was like, eh, she probably shouldn't have done that. And I'm glad that we we have uh, video footage of me saying, take the road teams to cover. Um, I thought we were looking at a Chiefs-Lions Super Bowl, the way it was shaping up. Um, but I had the Chiefs and the Niners before the year. And, uh, it, I mean, I guess the NFL can't be upset with this matchup, right? I mean, we're upset with it because we just saw it four years ago, and you know, we've seen Mahomes every year. I mean, think about this. The, so with the Chiefs now going four, going to the Super Bowl four times in five years, in the last 23 years, two teams have covered 13 of those Super Bowls in the AFC. Patriots went to nine. Brady went to another in the NFC, but Patriots went to nine. Chiefs have now gone to four. Roethlisberger, Manning covered, what, seven? Burrow. And then Burrow, Flacco, and Rich Gannon, if you can remember back to 2002 the year after Brady won his first. So um, I don't know what it is. I just, I mean, we'll get into it, I know. But I just, uh, I kind of had a feeling the AFC, just, it, the AFC's just never been good enough to catch up to these these super, well, super teams, but like these dynasty teams. Yeah. The Patriots, it seemed like the only resistance they ever really had was, was Manning. Not even Roethlisberger. He won when he didn't have to face Brady. Burrow has been the only guy that's been able to take down Mahomes, or only active guy in the, in the entire NFL that's beaten Mahomes at this point. So uh, here we are, Niners. And I, doesn't it just feel to you like the Niners have no chance? I, I don't know why. It just feel, it, I'm, I know that's not true, of course. Yeah. Um, well, I think, I feel like this is almost like the Niners are more team of destiny than the Chiefs are. Right. I mean, the, the Lions felt like team of destiny like that's kind of right. what it felt like going into sunday they go up 24 7 they're like oh they're gonna roll right and then we saw what happened dan campbell made some really dumb mistakes but all that yeah at, at the i mean honestly I've, I've been like really mulling it over and i was like you built the house with this can't be shocked when it burns down right with the same material but that's what you build the house with, and you kind of have to just live with that i was watching with a Friend, Lions fans, but at least he's been consistent, right? He didn't stray from what he's been doing all year, but there were two instances where he egregiously did not kick a field goal. Yeah. The first one when it was – actually, he did the right thing initially. When it was 21-7 before the half, they had a chance to maybe go up 28-7. That was the right thing. Yeah. They went into the half with a three-score lead. Niners get a field goal in the opening drive, and then they're in rain. I mean, every – these days, inside the 30 is anybody's ring, including Michael Badgley. Didn't kick it. Could have been 27 to 10. We don't know if Badgley makes it, but good chance he makes it. Then the Niners score a couple times. It's 27-24. Then it, I guess it would have been 27 all. And he's down there again. And you have a chance to kick the field goal to tie the game. That one, to me, is more inexcusable. Yeah. can understand a little bit. Oh, we want to push the envelope, try to go up one. And uh, I don't know what it is. It just seems like... So whenever the Patriots won, it would seem like some guy on the other team, team the, the goat, not the good goat, the goat like we, we used to talk about goats, like the Cubs, Billy Goat. Um, it was Billy Cundiff and Lee Evans one year. Actually, I remember that as a Ravens fan. And Zay Flowers this year. And then the, on the other side, it was Josh Reynolds. Two huge dropped passes. So you can put it on Campbell. You can't put it on Goff. I thought Goff played a really good game. He did miss that one throw that could have made it 28-7. So probably the one throw he wants back the whole game. But Reynolds, man, oh, those two drops. The one was on fourth and two, and then the other was a wide open third and ten. Uh, it's just, you just, uh, you're just a, a crushing day for the Ravens fans and for the Lions fans. And then for it to be against, because if it was against two other teams that were like the rate, like if it was like against the Bills, or if it was the Lions against maybe like Green Bay, you're like, yeah, it stinks, but it's you know, both teams are kind of coming from the same place, but it's it's the Chiefs and the freaking Niners. Yeah. The Chiefs have been in four, in the last six championship games, four out of the last five Super Bowls. The Niners 
were in their fourth NFC Championship game in five years. This is the eighth Super Bowl of franchise history. And it's like, it, it kind of can't get more vanilla than this, in my opinion. The So I, I this was so wise, the way to so lose. Lines. So wise. So Bills. Still. And Bills. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the Bills lose. The I mean, I, obviously, it's not as much just because of the way I think it happened. But just the Bills. Well, and, and, you know, obviously, in franchise history, the Ravens, it's not like they've never been in this spot. But, um, you know, it felt like this was a year where the field was open for our team of destiny. I mean, I know the Chiefs are a three seed, but who cares? They just had a couple letdown games in the season. So people have opined on Twitter and such that, um, you know, there are a few drops, like white drop passes away from the, what, 14 and three easily. You know, the Tony's offsides against the Bills. Tony drops a pass that turns into a pick six against the Lions and Valdez Scantling, that PI that, yeah, that didn't get. I mean, they were like this close to, you know, maybe being 14 and three. So the whole, oh, they were three seed on the road, God forbid, because no other teams ever had to go on the road. I mean, it just, it felt like it was open for a Lions or not that the Ravens are a team of destiny, but maybe the Bills. Uh, maybe even Cleveland. We were talking about Cleveland before the playoffs, or even Houston. Houston. I was going to say they also just retained their offensive coordinator. That was maybe twenty minutes ago. Ryan mm -hmm. uh, Bobby Slowick said yeah. he is staying. He's staying. Same thing with Ben Johnson staying right. in Detroit, which was really big for Washington. But we don't. We won't talk coaches until after the Super Bowl. Yeah, because it's just not worth it. Um, let's. I guess before we jump into the games, major announcement regarding the chaotic and talent table pass league. Officially, sources are telling me, my sources are telling me that uh, we do have a home. We officially have a venue uh, for all six weeks um, with uh, Elite Motorworks of Lake Ranch that will be hosting us. Gracious hosts. Um, so just a little something to keep in the back here of the listener's mind. Uh, figured we'd do that on top of the show, but let's jump into these games. So Kansas City defeat the Baltimore Ravens 17 10 in a Defensive slugfest. Uh, Kansas City didn't score a point in the entire second half, and Baltimore only scored three in the fourth. Kansas City has been given up three total fourth quarter points all postseason, too, which is insane. I don't know if that's 100% right. Quote me on that. No, it but is. It's, but it's Bills, under 10. I know Bills it's were shut out. I want to say Miami. Yeah, Miami got their touchdown early. It was 26 yeah. 7. You know. So, um, yes. And if it feels like I, I joke, I feel like I've seen this movement before. That's because 20 years ago, I actually went to a Chiefs Ravens game that ended 17 to 10 Chiefs. It was Dante Hall running a kickoff back 97 yards. And it was a little easier to stomach back then because, first of all, it was a regular season. And second of all, the Chiefs were, they were likable. I actually, I actually liked the Chiefs growing I was, I had Trent Green and Priest Holmes. I watched those teams, Priest Holmes, Raven. But man, it's like we talked about last week. The narrative has totally changed with this, this Chiefs team. And, um, the Ravens, they did what see, they did what I thought. The one thing I thought they wouldn't do would be beat themselves. Yeah. Like if you told me, you know, Kansas City just beat them. I mean, they beat them obviously, and at the good and fair and square, there was plenty of controversy. Um, but the Ravens, like, they did things to beat themselves. That yeah. Normally, just even going back over the years, they were always so good matching up with the old Patriots. I say the Chiefs and the new Patriots. They were always good at matching up with those teams because they were disciplined. You know, and, and they didn't beat themselves. And my God, like flowers. Well, I don't know. So, what do you think's worse, the, the taunting or the fumble when he could have had a? It would have been first and goal at the one. It was second and eight at the nine. So the fumble, if he just goes down, says, "Okay, I don't need to get in the end zone here. Just get a first and goal. We're going to score." I'm not sure which was worse, but they both cost the game. Um, I I don't really blame a lot of players for trying to reach for it, right? Because you're in the heat of the moment. You, you see the end zone, you're like, if I score here, that's going to be a really big part, of him, especially in the AFC Championship. I don't blame him for that whatsoever. Right. The taunting was unacceptable. And, oh, and people, first off, we have to remember the rest of looking at this in real time as well. Yeah. And that was one of the, the Leonardo DiCaprio, like, there, there it is. Like, you, you see that moment. You see when he shoves him down. Yeah. Every person I was watching the game with, they go, taunting. Not like, everyone starts yeah. screaming. Oh, yeah, yeah. 100%. Now. It was immediate. And even if you're talking about it, and, and again, I think the, the problem with social media is that we 
will see every single slow-mo, every single angle, and they go, look, this, 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 this. No, that's, it. that's not what it is. It was a, haunting is like how the uh, Congress defines it. Yeah. You see it? Yeah, you, you, you know, know right. You, know, you can't define it, you just you know, know it. You yeah. know it when you see it. And that was like, to me, that was really haunting, and some people were trying to say he was grabbing onto the plate. Maybe he was grabbing onto the plate, but it was for a split second. Yeah. Of, he like, maybe he grabbed, like, they were tangled up, he made a tackle. If players were doing that every time, Somebody grabs a leg in a pile. Oh, I mean, Every time somebody like is tangled up, it would be. I mean, it would look like the city of Detroit, just constant fighting all the time. I mean, that and that was specifically taunting. Now, I think if he gets up, he doesn't spin the ball. He doesn't stand over him after the shove. Maybe the refs say, "All right, we'll let it go." Right? But he gets up, spins the ball, stands over him while apparently they were in hurry up, which they were. They were trying to get up to the ball. And somebody, people will try and justify it saying, oh, he was just trying to get up because they were in hurry up. Then don't spin the ball if you're in hurry up. Don't stand over them if you're in hurry up offense. That's not what you do. Right. We saw Chase Claypool do that last year against the Vikings on Thursday night football. Was it last year or two years ago? Oh, Either way. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, yeah the, right. I, now, I've never played real football, and I'm much older than Zay Flowers, and I'm just sitting here, so this is easier to say, but – how is your first instinct not to just be like, awesome, we got a big play, like, like run back, let's let's go do it again, like, we're getting close. Like, how are you not just caught up in the excitement? Why is your first reaction? Now I get it. I look, there guys are talking smack. I understand, and there's a, there's that kind of machismo bravado a little bit, you know. But I don't know how after your, this is the, for the Ravens was the 19th game they played, it's the 20th game the Chiefs have played. But how how do you not think, my God, like we everything we do has to be focused on winning here, yeah. and so you know, some of these right. And 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 there was like because Van Noy, who's supposed to be the veteran presence with multiple Super Bowl rings, he had a taunting, uh, uh, was a personal foul late in the first half. Yeah. It was one of the two that they had on the drive that let the Chiefs get a field goal, which was big just before the half. And uh, you know they always catch the second guy, but again. Van Noy's been in the league so long. Why even do that? Just, if anything, just turn to the ref and say, hey, you know, point paddle on him or something, right? Maybe you get the call, maybe you don't, but at least you don't get a penalty. And they just, I don't know. I mean, if you go back, we were just talking before we started about the Justin Tucker thing. With the, were the Ravens rattled by the Chiefs? Were they really incriminated? Because they never, at least with this Chiefs iteration, the Ravens have not matched up at all. They played them five times, and the, even the one game they won was incredibly lucky. It was a late Edwards Alaire fumble. It just for whatever reason, Mahomes has just been able to have, you know, not for whatever reason, a great quarterback, but for whatever reason, the Ravens, just, they always seem to play their worst games against the Chiefs. And a lot of teams do, but it just it seems like a bad matchup. The, I think also, the Ravens seem young. I mean, I would say they're pretty young. Lamar is, he's, you know, he's the quarterback. Yeah, um, he obviously had struggled, but it did seem like the moment was too big for them now. But I think this was good. This was really good for the future of the organization. You get playoff experience. You get to know what it's like to be a favorite and lose. Right. Maybe they can go in next year and be an underdog and win. Or they'll know what it's like to be the favorite. They'll right. say, we're going to prepare differently. We're not going to focus on all this like happy bullshit where we're celebrating everything we're going to try we're not going to try and rattle them mentally we're going to come out and do our job and that was the bill belichick thing do your job that's well always been the, that's always been the model yeah and and uh, you you know there's so many themes that are just repeating themselves you know, from the new england era here with kansas city and one of them it's always coaching right Andy Reid, it's just al fox yeah. whoever he's um the ravens you know they they were treating this game like they were in a massive hole the whole time. So much so that their running backs, or not even their running backs, their two running backs combined, combined to carry the ball six times the entire game. Jackson had eight carries, and Zay Flowers had two carries. Gus Edwards, three for 20, actually had a, he actually had a 15 yard run. And Justice Hill, three carries, three yards. The Ravens were in like a panicked hurry up mode the entire game. Now, I understand because I think they sensed 
from those first two drives that Chiefs came out and scored that it was going to be one of those games. But they should have figured that their defense was going to settle in eventually, and it did. And I think it changed what the Chiefs did. The Chiefs started to go into more of like a game management mode, you know, thinking, okay, well, this is all we need to do. And now the Ravens start to get panicked. Okay, now the Chiefs are going to run the clock, and we're, we're, we're in a hurry up. we got to hustle. And it just – the Ravens just didn't run the football. I mean, it's just been such a theme for these teams. Like they, everybody just gets scared and abandoned to run it. On the other side, Kansas City had – I mean, Pacheco had 24 carries himself. Yeah. Well, Lamar, Four times as much as two running backs that for the Ravens. Lamar seemed scared to he, run the ball. Yeah. He bit. really did. I mean, there, there were times he's sitting in the pocket and just running around in the back, running around in the back. Right. And I can't tell you how I was sitting with the Chiefs fan, and I, I wanted the Chiefs to lose because sure. I was trying to get under his skin, and I don't want to see the Chiefs in the Super Bowl again. Right. And I was yelling, run the fucking ball. Run. Run. Like, there's right. a certain point in a play where I think almost everyone, even the defense and, and the offense and all the coaches, everyone says, all right, you've got to just get run now. There's no reason to try and extend this play. Yeah. And he just wouldn't he wouldn't do it. And normally he does. And how much do you think that might be, you know, all the talk all week was this is Lamar's legacy game, right? He's got a, a chance to beat Mahomes and go to the Super Bowl and get, you know, three, you know, three postseason wins now under his belt. And I, I almost wonder if that in his head he's thinking, well, if I run, that's just what everyone expects me to do. And I have to pass. I have to be a pocket faster to show that I can do that. I just wonder how many times that thought was in his head when he absolutely could take it off and run. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it, felt, it just it felt like the Ravens were mentally handicapped in this game. I, it, it was astounding to see. But, you know, I'm also coming at it from a Ravens fan that has watched those older teams with all the veterans and all the, the grit and the swagger and the experience those teams that would go every year. And even though the Ravens and you know, Lamar's played in some postseason games, they, you know, the Ravens aren't like the savvy, you know, we're in it every year kind of. Like last year they go with Huntley, and the year before they don't make it with Jackson, and the year before they're playing with really limited fans. And it just, I don't know, this team, just, it, right, the moment was too big for the Ravens. And Harbaugh and his coaching staff got out of what they had been doing all year. And credit to the Chiefs. Their defense, I mean, it's just we don't talk about it enough. It's one, they had, I think it's a record now in one season to have gone this many games, not giving up more than 27. And you're holding teams to 7, 24, and uh, 10 in the postseason. I mean, that's the, that's the frightening thing because you always say, oh, imagine the Chiefs had a good defense. Now they have a really good defense. What do you even – where do you go from it? As, as a Ray, I mean, as – as a team, because it feels like kind of everything's there, right? I mean, the, most of the pieces you need to be a championship contender are there. I think, I'm, I, as a complete outsider from a Ravens fan, I know this first. This again, this is not bad. Like, obviously, it's like oh, it really sucks to look at. But you're a young. Team. I don't think you have really have to do much. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, Zay Flowers is the number one. I don't. I don't know how confident they are in OBJ right now, future wise. Right. I want to get. Maybe draft the young kid and to work under Andrews. Andrews has trouble staying healthy. Um, defensively, I mean, you guys did get help hold the Chiefs to 17 points. Yeah, I mean, those first two drives, though, were just – They went right down. How, yeah. and, and remember, the Chiefs kind of let them off the hook after the strip sack. They went for it on fourth down, which, I, again, that we always take the points. I was surprised the Chiefs didn't do that because they do that. You know, it's maybe it's a different outcome in the end anyway, so – um, yeah, I mean, defensively, they, they made a lot of adjustments. They just didn't make enough adjustments offensively. Yeah. Um, I'm going to read off the end here. One quarterback, they were 20 for 31, 267. Their defense gave up 31 points. Another quarterback, 20 for 37, 272. Their defense gave up 17 points. Right, yeah. Before <laughs> we jump to the... Uh, Brock Purdy or well, Lamar Jackson. I, 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 and I wanted to say just one more thing on Flowers. I think the Ravens do need to, you know, they, they need to beef up their receiving core for sure. Um, I remember hearing about this. I don't remember exactly. I think this was 
I think this was in reference. You may not even remember. It was back about six, I think it was 2017. The Patriots were playing the Steelers, and Jesse James caught a pass at the goal line and kind of reached out you know, to try to get in, and it would have given the Steelers a fourth lead with about 30 seconds left. They ended up overturning. There was a lot of controversy. The Patriots ended up getting the one seed instead of Pittsburgh that year. They went on to win the AFC, and Pittsburgh lost uh, to, Jacksonville. Bye, to Jacksonville. And I, um, I remember – actually, I remember a random story about that week running into Ben Watson. I remember Ben Watson at a restaurant in Baltimore. And I, I actually yeah. asked about it. He was a great end. He was, he was a man of the year. He was, you know, he had a really good career. I said, you think the guy – and he said, no, I don't think it's bad. And, you know, he said, just it happens, right? And then I was watching something, and I, I, don't, I forget how it came up or where I saw it, but it was that Bill Belichick would specifically coach guys to never extend the ball like that at the goal line for fear of what happened to Zay Flowers. But, you know, so much of what the Patriots did all those years was situational football. What bothered me most about the Flowers fumble, if that's fourth and goal, by all means. You sell out, try to score. Maybe yeah. even third and goal because you don't want to get the fourth down. It was second and seven from the eight yard line, meaning that if Flowers goes down at the one yard line, it's first and goal. Ravens have three, probably four plays to punch the ball in the end zone. Their running game in line and Lamar Jackson. It it's like that. Maybe that's not even on Flowers himself. It's on somebody in the middle or it's on one of the coaches to say, "Here's the." You know the player, right? It's not like he's not just like he wasn't aware. That he's going to be you should be ready. You have to be yeah. ready for that. And to just hold the ball. And he was diving. You can see. I think he started to reach out. Like the one, not even the half-yard line. And he got it. And you can see it starts to come out when he's not about the half-yard line. And I just – it's those things that New England and now Kansas City seem to benefit from all the time. And it's those things that if you're a coach – your player, especially going against a team where you have no margin for error, those are the things you have to you have to almost envision all these crazy scenarios in your head beforehand so that you don't lose a football game on them. I think it would I feel like this would hurt more of the one too. Right. Because these are these are learning moments for yeah. for especially number one mind. Yeah. There's never he's never been in a moment this big. Right. So yeah. Um, hey, look, he had a great – he had a touchdown early. He had that big play oh, yeah. before the taunt. Yeah. Unfortunately, the taunt that came after that. Um, I mean, he had five for 115. Yeah. That's a great – I feel like he's going to get taunt because of the taunt and the fumble. Yeah, he's going to eat. But yeah. for a rookie wide receiver against pro- arguably like one of the best – or the best defenses in the league. And probably five, the best single cornerback. Yeah. Who's about to be a free agent. Who's yeah. coming to Colts. Uh, yeah, I hope so. <laughs> hope he leaves. It. But Flowers had – one less yard than Kelsey on uh, fewer than half as many catches. So he, yeah, I think most part he did what he needed to do. But again, where were the other receivers? Aguilar had one big catch for 39. Justice Hill, four for 34. Beckham, Beckham three back for 22. Right, and Beckham, they, they couldn't connect on a few of those long throws. I mean, Beckham wanted a flag. Maybe there was one that was close, but nothing egregious. I just, I thought we'd see Andrews and Lightly more involved. Two catches for Andrews, two catches for Likely. I understand Andrews not really gets involved in the first game. Lamar Bad. Lamar had a Lamar. better average than yeah, Justice Hill, Odell Beckham Jr., Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, and Rashad Bateman. Yeah. He had a better yards per reception than those guys. Yeah, <laughs> and it's crazy. Think about that play, and then think about last week in the Bills game where the Bills – Fumble at the goal line. Of course, the Chiefs fumbled at the goal line, and that wasn't quite the same. It wasn't it wasn't extending the ball; he was just rolling over. Yeah. But like in both games, it looked like oh, there were a couple of breaks that he thought maybe it's your day. And stuff like that happens, and it's like you said, but nothing's ever due, or nothing's ever defined against the Chiefs. Yeah. They just say it doesn't matter. It just, just reminds me stop. even more of that past team. Like just, oh my just God. the I mean, way this they, is, yeah, the way. Uh, just the attitude, right? The Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, which like, they're putting out a lot of Brady, pro, pro tape. Taylor Swift, Brady, Giselle. I was actually talking about that with my dad. He was like, yeah, like Brady and Giselle was was like the big thing for a little while. Yeah, back then when they started dating, and 
than I got now, which is like more. I blame the media. I don't blame the media. Right. Yeah. It's going to die down Eventually. after the Super Bowl. Or if he retires, yeah. Yeah, or if he retires. I almost think if he retires, it's going to be more. There's going to be so much more because he doesn't have to play football. What if someone offered you uh, either the Chiefs could win this game, but then Kelsey will retire and won't have to deal with it anymore, or they lose, but you got to see him play a couple more years and probably see the Chiefs in another one or two Super Bowls? I would probably just I, take the win now and get him out of there. I'm, I'm kind of 50 50 when it comes to that because I, I do enjoy watching like really great teams or something like this, like watching those Patriots teams do that. Like I can, I can sit and like when I think about when they won that, when Brady won the, the Super Bowl with the Bucks, I was like, that's like a moment in history that I got to witness. Like in football history, we're gonna come back to this and say Brady beat Mahomes. He, he never lost to the goat. You know, maybe the second goat. By the time I'm old and thinking about football, right, right, right. And I, I enjoy stuff like that. I mean, obviously, like me as a football fan, I will. I'm like, oh, the Colts. I'm I'm already preparing myself for the Colts to host the AFC Championship next year. Because right. Anthony Richardson, kind of that, I'm, I'm just going in my head. I'm like, oh, well, Jason Kelsey's going to be our offensive line coach. And A.J. Brown's going to come to the Colts because of Shane Steichen. But Jerry Sneed, he's going to be like, I'm just, I'm going through that. But watching this Chiefs team and, and see them do this is both annoying and painful and all that shit. But at the same time, it's like, wow, this is really awesome to be able to witness a second dynasty like this. Something so impressive where this guy just, just doesn't lose. I mean, he just, he's, he just doesn't. He's never lost a divisional round game. Yeah. He has, he has the same amount of playoff wins as Peyton Manning at this very moment. Manning was seen, right? Manning had 14 playoff wins. This is 14 to 3 playoff games in his career, wow. right? Manning was 14 and 13. Manning played for yeah. 18 years. 18 years. 18, 18 years. Holmes has played for six. And he's already won. I mean, that's he just before the weekend. Yeah, I think it's 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 gotta be soon. Like yeah. you can't but if you think about it, he'll have won three Super Bowls, so he doesn't have Belichick on that. Conference title games, he's been to like fourteen conference title games with two separate teams. Five and six in his career. Because he went to five with the Eagles and he's been to six with the Chiefs. Yeah. So, he's, so his 11, record is five and six. He's been to eleven. Right. But just the, the sheer being able to do that in two completely different eras of football. He's now, he kind of got over the hump of winning the Super Bowl because that was his big knock. Like, oh, Andy still hasn't won the Super Bowl. Now, I mean, he wins three Super Bowls with Mahomes. I feel like he could definitely get in there. In, in the top. He's not going to be Belichick. Belichick has this you know, take away. Right. Six Bowls and Belichick has not won. Yeah, and, and Reed faced Belichick four times in the postseason in the Mahomes faced Brady twice in the postseason and only two. It's sort of like I was saying last week. There's no the passing, thing, yeah. passing of the torch. It was just like, okay, now you're out of the way. Now we can do what we, we were going to do. Yeah, so I don't think either one of them will ever. I, maybe if Mahomes, if Mahomes somehow finds a way to win eight Super Bowls, which if he follows the time or somewhat follows the pace he's doing right now, he won't have a break like Brady did. And he probably will hit eight, which is insane to think that. It's somewhat probable that it will hit eight Super Bowls. Wow. It's just it, I can love it and hate it at the same time. This is my dad loves it just because he loves watching. I think that's an old man. They yeah. love watching like great things happen versus like no, I want to see the Detroit Lions, right. a horrible franchise, finally win. Yeah, and my dad, he was known. Um, let's switch it up. Uh, Detroit heartbreak, absolute heartbreak against San Francisco. They blow, they give up 27 unanswered points. Um, just complete mismanagement. Complete, utter mismanagement by Dan Campbell. Um, but it's what got you. So congrats to the San Francisco 49ers. They are not the team of destiny, but I want them to win because I mean, they've been here so often and they just can't get it done. Right. And they put together how many things and Brock Purdy's been so much doubt. Everyone's been like, Purdy's not the guy, Purdy's not the guy. Well, if Purdy's not the guy, I don't know what, what the definition of the guy is because he got it done when he needed to get done on Sunday. Right. Yeah. There's been so much Brock Purdy hate. Um, I think 
I think the concern shouldn't be about Brock Purdy. It should be about the 49ers defense, which has just not looked good. I, I don't even, I, and I guess, you know, Bosa, he's a great player. I think he had, what, two sacks this year? He's, he's lost 50% of his motivation from Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes. Well, how do you figure? Well, one is, one is 100% black, the other one is 50%. <laughs> oh, what's the reference there? I can miss. Uh, there's a very strong and some evidence of Nick Bosa being a being a racist. racist. I said it. I said it. You didn't say it. Yeah. Um, okay, I didn't know that. Uh, but he he hasn't really. I mean, he led the team to ten. It feels like he's been quiet. He's been very quiet, and it feels like the 49ers secondary. I feel like they've never had a good secondary. They've always been about the pass rush and those fast linebackers. Yeah, I remember when they signed like Richard Sherman. Yeah, and some people were like, "Oh, they might, this might be the piece." I was like, I don't know. "Not that I mean, age. Not now. No. Ten years ago, yeah, but not now." Well, they got and they just didn't get at least in the first half. They got no pressure on Jared Goff. Yeah, they really didn't. They, um, well, and they gave up 182 on the ground too. That yeah, and again, talk about teams. Why do you stop running the ball? Now I know Detroit fumbled on a run, but. Boy, Montgomery had 93, 15 carries. Gibbs had 45 on 12. And Jameson Williams had a 42-yard run to get the scoring going. I mean, they were they were doing great on the ground. The 49ers stayed committed to the run. They, they rushed 33 times. Not 30, had five of those. But um, I think, look, I, I do think one thing for the 49ers is they've, they've had some good mojo this postseason. Think about the IU catch, the yeah. one, you know, that, that – bats up in the air or whatever. You kind of had a feeling when that happened that the luck was starting to change. Yeah. They've had two comeback wins. During the season, the 49ers, they didn't play a ton of close games, didn't feel like. felt like they, they blew a lot of teams out. They blew out Dallas. They blew out Philly. Um, you know, they blew out, obviously, a lot of the bad teams they played. And they well, the, the, the storyline was uh, Shanahan was open. Right. Down five. And, and, and now look at them. Two, two straight games they've come from behind them. Yeah, I mean, technically, I guess they weren't tied. They were not – they never trailed in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But they've had two noticeable deficits. I mean, they, were, they weren't down big before, but they had to come back and win with a late drive, and then they had to win, you know, down 17 last week. So um, I think that bodes well for them, but I've said this before in terms of the Super Bowl. I just think they're a terrible matchup with the Chiefs, or the Chiefs are a terrible matchup for – the 49ers. Yeah. Going back to the Super Bowl and going back to the game they had last year, and that was Garoppolo. Both games, I get it. So Brock Purdy, actually Brock Purdy had a in garbage time in that game and threw an interception. I got to look that up. But it was 44 to 23. Breaking news. I'll, I'll, I'll add in the music later. The Baltimore Orioles have been sold to who? Uh, to, oh, God, I got to not going to look it up. Um, a couple billionaires. Uh, oh, yeah. It is um, Ru- uh, Rubenstein, David Rubenstein. It was a, su- yeah, Orioles owners reached a surprise at Fields to the franchise. $1.725 billion. But no more Angelos family. So this could be, this could just be the the moment that the Orioles can turn it around. Truly. Were they, was it a surprise? I mean, there have been rumors about it, but I just didn't know how quickly it was going to come to fruition. Yeah, because I feel like normally I'll get a little. You always kind of know they're like, oh, yeah. they're shopping the Baltimore Orioles or entertaining offers. I didn't hear anything about that. That's two, that's pri- right. two private equity billionaires, David Rubenstein and Mike Arugetti, because I pronounce it. My dad actually knew Rubenstein a little bit growing up, so that's exciting. Um, I know we're ways away from baseball season, but we got to have some well. Ball- Good news, right? right now, yeah, so. that's that's about as good of news. As yeah, have. yeah. Uh, but where were we? We were talking Bosa, right? Yes. We were talking uh, Nick Bosa. He's he's been pretty quiet. Yeah. Well, so if you look at the 49ers stats, you know, I mean, I think I want to say they're first in the league in sacks, right? But the but the thing that can be deceiving is, first of all, think about last year. The Eagles, if I'm not mistaken had a record for sacks yeah. season. Did they get Mahomes at all in the Super Bowl? I want to say they didn't. Maybe once Mahomes was dealing with the ankle injury. I, I have to look, but the point being is I'm always a little wary of teams that 
it's great if you can lead the league in sacks, that's tremendous, right? You have a great pass rush. What happens when you're not just able to get a big back and rush the pass? Zero sacks last year. Zero sacks for the year. Yeah, right. the Super Bowl. It was like 80 or 70 something during the regular season. It was a gross it was insane. Number. It like was, they were yeah. getting like. So I, I wonder about that. And I just, I don't know how much I trust that 49er secondary mm-hmm. to hold up. I mean, it, you know, I just, I, I'm having flashbacks. Tyree Kill got behind the defense. What was it? Third and 15. It was because it was a big play in that Super Bowl. Um, and it was third and 15. It was a 20 to 10 game. And they just let Tyree Kill slip behind the defense. It completely yeah. turned the game around. And um, so, look, the 49ers, the thing is, there's they absolutely were expected to be here. They have gotten close year in and year out. They have maybe Purdy is the guy, in, you know, because think about it. This is the third Niners Super Bowl this century, right? They won all five in the 80s and 90s. They were 5-0 and in the Super Bowl. And then they lost with Kaepernick. And then, you know, that whole thing, he was gone. Um they lose with Garoppolo, who is that surprising? I mean, Garoppolo, come on. Yeah. I've never been a fan. Um, I was, I was actually very big fan of him coming to Indianapolis. Yeah. When, when he was a free agent, agent, I was like, yeah. oh man, I want Garoppolo. But then again, I have pretty much just been begging for any some semblance of consistency right. at quarterback. And I was like, Garoppolo is average. And that's all I want. Like, I'll take an average quarterback that can. Move the ball down the field, yeah. And he's been to a Super Bowl. Like Jimmy Garoppolo has been to a Super Bowl, which is crazy. And I was like, I'll take that. Yeah, perfectly fine with it. But we didn't get it. I'm trying to remember who the guy on the Niners was in the 2021 NFC Championship game against the Rams that dropped the easiest interception on the man from Stafford and, and ended up costing him. Oh. Became a big cost of winning the game. I can't remember who it was. Um, I can't remember. I, I but. My point is, I don't know. I, it was Jaqu- a Jaquiski Tart. I don't know if he's still Tart. on the team. I, I remember the last great name. Tart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't forget a name like Tart. It's usually two uh, T's at the end, right? T-A-R-T-T. T-A-R-T-T. Yes. He's a, he's a free agent. He's not with the Niners. So, uh, look, they had they, – they, I don't know. It's the same issue I have with the Ravens where it's like, I don't do trust. I know the Niners did just have a big comeback. But do you trust if they need to throw, if they need to get away from Christian McCaffrey, or if their defense can't just get pinned its ears back and go after the passer? Do they have enough to be able to slow down Kansas City? One thing we didn't talk about in the Kansas City game, and this just adds to the well, to the frustration if you're a Ravens fan, to the allure of what the Chiefs are doing, is they had a few big guys out. We've been so used to the Chiefs being completely healthy through the years, and they've been lucky with Mahomes, and he played – through an injury last year, but he played. Kelsey hasn't been hurt, and at least in the postseason, Chris Jones. And they've had a lot of their key guys, yeah. but no Joe Tooney. Not sure if he'll be back in the Super Bowl. No Willie Gay, which I thought, yeah, because he's the spy on yeah. Lamar Jackson. So I thought, well, you can exploit that the way that Buffalo kind of did in the run game. And they lost Charles Amenahu during the game back towards ACL. So he, he Amenahu's former. 49er, and he was third on the team in sacks, despite the fact that he was suspended for domestic violence, I think, for the first four or six games. He, uh, he, played, he played 11 games this year and still picked up seven sacks. So they've had to deal with a few guys being out, um, and yet here they are. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Do you feel like the 49ers can beat them? Do you really feel or does it just feel inevitable that the Chiefs are here again? It's it's the Patrick Mahomes. It's, yeah. He's, I mean, I feel like the Chiefs or I feel like this is like the 49ers here. Like they they were disrespected yeah. all year. Yeah. All year. Eagles Eagles fans are on you guys like uh your team just sucked. Like it's not because Brock Purdy got hurt last year, right? Right. And they go and the Eagles they fall apart like a cold, major collapse. But the Niners, they get that, right? They, they win the NFC title. They're like, see, see, we got it. We were right. The team is good. But you got to win the Super Bowl. Like, I, I feel oh, like yeah, this is the Super Bowl to prove them wrong. And they've been, what have they been, like four out of the last five NFC title games? Yeah. And they're one, or now they're two and three. 
and them, but they were one and two. Yeah. Well, and then they went to three. I mean, all time they were seven and eleven in that round. They showed the graphic during the game. Yeah. Okay. They they were at one point in the franchise they were five and zero. Oh, so there was, there was a really funny graphic that they did show. It was like total NFL NFC championship game, like playing in total championship games. Lions seven, like 49ers seven three. Or something like that. Right. Something really gross. Yeah. So I was like, that's an insult to that. Like, you know they brought that up. Yeah. Just to be like, ah, uh, like the Lions are Hilarious. The, the Niners won five Super Bowls in 14 years. Between 81, the 81 and 94 seasons, they won five Super Bowls. That, so 14 seasons. Multiply that, add one. It's been 29 seasons now since they've won one. And we think of, when you think of like, oh, historic, great NFL franchises, the Niners are up there because yeah. they have five, which trails only the the Patriots and Steelers with six. And they both trail Tom Brady with seven. Um, but, uh, the, you know, this feels like, I don't, I don't know that their window is closing per se, but in a couple of years, a lot of their big guys hit free agency. Yeah. It never feels like the Chiefs window is going to close as long as Mahomes is there, right? And, and Even I, in Kelsey games. And I, I heard about when they won. Because I, at the beginning of the year, Throughout, and you said this too, throughout the entire year, we were both like, it's, it's Patrick Mahomes. Like, I don't care what happens in the yeah. first season. It does not matter. Right, Houston Astros. They will never, yeah, yeah, like the window never closes. It's, it's, as, long as, that, as long as Mahomes is there, that window will never close. And we don't talk about the Niners in the same light that we talk about the Cowboys. One, they're not as obnoxious. Like, they're yeah. clearly not as obnoxious. Yeah. Because the Cowboys, I think the Cowboys have won more recently. Right, technically by one year, by one year, the year after the Niners' last title in '95. Yeah, yeah. So we don't talk about the Niners because the Niners are always, like you said, they're always talked about as this massive franchise, historical great franchise. Yeah. But they haven't won in 29 years. And I'll give you, I'll give you another little story. The 2014 Kansas City Royals had not won in 29 years when they played the San Francisco, San Francisco Giants. San Francisco, Kansas City. Yeah, I know. The Giants, the Giants were working on their third title in, in that five dynasty in uh-huh. five years. We're pretty much here. It's what? What is it? Is this three and five here for the Chiefs? That they this would be three and five, yes. So we just – little roles reversed here. Oh, good little point, yeah. Baseball, football. Yeah, had not been in, right. Well, yeah, the Royals hadn't even been to the postseason. Yeah. That was a crazy run. Of course, they beat the Orioles on the way. ALCS, Kansas City beats Baltimore. Yeah, I Kansas City about loses that. to San Francisco. I didn't <laughs> even think of that. Um, we were talking about, we actually talked about that 14 and 15 Royals team uh, on Monday's episode. Well, yeah, the 15 Royals team was all but dead in game four of the ALDS. They were down 6 2 going into the eighth inning of an elimination so, game. Houston, Houston right? Yeah. Because that was before Houston's run started. That was the first year that Houston made it. Since I think like oh, five in like a decade, whenever like they won, well, they, and they were the National League, yeah. And lost. that Royals team, they got second life. They came back and said, "You can't kill us." And then they beat the Jays and they beat the Mets. Um, and it, so with Mahomes, uh, it feels like I don't know. Part of part of what happened when I'm watching them throw Tucker Tomlin stuff, they're just so intense, right? They're so and Brady was the same way, yeah. obsessive about winning, obsessed with. And you have to be that way. Weird stat, present stat. Both the uh, Chiefs and 49ers, now they play, each team plays five interconference, interconference between the two. Oh, yeah, yeah. During the year. They both went two and three against the opposing conference. It's a weird thing. I don't know. The Chiefs lost three games to the NFC this year. The Niners lost three games to the AFC. The Niners lost to the Ravens, the Bengals, and the uh, Browns. The Browns, that was the yeah. first loss. They beat the Jaguars and Steelers, and the Chiefs lost to the they Lions and Green Eagles Bay. and Green Bay and beat the crap out of the Bears and the Vikings. Taylor Swift's debut. Was it? Oh, that, that, was, that was the week for the Bears. That was when that coordinator was being investigated for. Yeah, no, they, they also got robbed. All their farming equipment got robbed. Oh, like God. $100,000 yeah. all week. And then Travis Kelsey does the, hey, babe, you want to come to my game? Because he knew they were playing the Bears, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm yeah. gonna fuck up. We're gonna ball out. Yeah, you yeah. just knew they were. That that is the worst feeling in the world too. If you're on the other sideline or on the other in the other oh, dugout, yeah. yeah, and you see like the guy, the guy's like, yeah, I invited my girl today, and it's like, yeah. oh shit, yeah. we're gonna get shit pumped today. Yeah, I mean, this is not good. 
Yeah, it's uh, so. Uh, but a lot of years, you know, what you sometimes, or anyway, sometimes you can look and you look at the two conferences and because you might see the records, uh, the Chiefs are eleven and six. Although throw out the regular season, you know, Chiefs, but sometimes in a given year, one conference is just very superior to the other, and so the one seed in one conference might be actually a lot better than the one seed in the other because you know they had a tougher road to get their 12 wins versus yeah. and, and so i don't know if that's going to play out here because both teams actually struggled against the other conference during the regular season um but i would I just always feel like the AFC these days is never that good it's just never as good and i don't know if it's just because they've allowed these dynasties to just go because the nfc hasn't really had a dynastic team since probably the Cowboys and the Niners and maybe the Packers, right? Like it, it, there's a lot of change teams that can win and you get now you have the Lions in the mix. I mean, in the AFC, it, it's always been like three of the tracks. There's just been one of those that's been superior. Maybe it's more than that. Yeah, the AFC is just feeling so much better. But the mean skill level in the right. NFC is – is a lot better than what we have in the AFC. Yes. So you can pull a random, probably a random four seed, have, have them play for the Super Bowl. The NFC will probably win most of the time. But again, a lot of times you're pulling the best team. Well, and, I mean, that is what the playoffs are. The best team plays against the best team in the conference. But you pull Patrick Mahomes, he's going to win every time. Not every time, but probably the majority of the time. It's just all the numbers and all the – everything aligns. And in, in, in the last time the Chiefs went back to a Super Bowl, they got embarrassed by the Bucs. It just yeah. feels like there's no way that happens again. Yeah. But then I again, just, nothing's I, I ever just, due with Mahomes one I, way or another. Again, I, I just keep thinking, like, I'm like, oh, well, and, you know, they lost to the Chiefs four years ago, which, weird coincidence, the last time the Chiefs and Niners played the Super Bowl was an election year. Election year, brand new election year. It's just before the pandemic. Um, the Los started, Angeles yeah. Dodgers were also one of the favorites to win the World Series that year. Was that still there? 2020. Well, the Super Bowl happened in 2020. It was the 2019 season, yeah. But, go, but going that very see the upcoming Major League Baseball season was the Dodgers were – Oh, because the they got the National League. Yeah, they, got, they traded for bets that, yep, that was, yeah. yeah. And then also, apparently there's another new coach. That's that's coming out, but oh, no, there was, there was I mean, the NFL is reusing their script. I think maybe the writers' strike, little little bit of a lazy script writing now. Well, what if the pandemic had hit just a few weeks earlier here, when they have canceled the Super Bowl? That's what I have wondered. Oh, the NFL. I don't think the NFL does that. No matter what, it's yeah, the it's NFL. Really and the, yeah, they'll say. Yeah, I mean, they'll they'll find the NFL. Roger Goodell is all. Yeah, he does everything. You don't do anything at Iraq. You know? I mean, I think they're more. I think they were more powerful than the New York government when it came to possibly canceling the game. The, yeah, the, 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 the Bills game. I feel like I feel like that Chiefs game with the snow. I think Roger Goodell said, "Hell no, you're not moving." It. And the government was like, "Okay, <laughs> what you want?" That I, yeah. That's just not bad. It's crazy that the NFL is that powerful. Like, oh, well, well, it seems like it is. A lot of times, my my basis for picking a team to win a series or a game is who's had the tougher road to get there. And then there's a part of me that looks and says, the 49ers had to rally to beat the the seven seeded Packers. And just Detroit beat the two seeded Lions. Yeah. I, and it's not that the Packers and Lions aren't pretty good teams. I mean, the Lions won 12 games this year. But then I look at the Chiefs. They just destroyed Miami. And we know Miami's kind of weak, fine. But they go on the road and beat Buffalo and the Ravens. It's like, oh, man, are they going to be intimidated by the night? I don't know. I just, I'm just having a hard time visualizing a scenario where Mahomes doesn't pull this out at the end. Whether it's close, it, it won't be a blowout, unlikely. But even that wouldn't totally shock me if it was. We won't give the prediction until next week. Right. We're not going to do that. So don't, don't expect any predictions. Yeah. Uh, these are not official predictions. We have to just for a little bit. Right, right. Um, well, like I said, they played in 2022. It was the first game after they traded for McCaffrey, and it was just a complete clinic by Mahomes. He had 423 yards, three touchdowns. Um, G oh, Drew Smith Schuster was the big 
receiver what's, that I mean, day. what's really the 49ers, too? I mean, besides, well, I mean, he only had eight carries that day. Um, that we can't, that was, yeah, I remember they had him on the field because he was still learning. Yeah, yeah, and Purdy actually came in in relief in that game and threw a pick. Yeah. So, so and what has changed? You're right. They have a more pass rusher in there. Um, actually, the guy who intercepted Mahomes in that game early, because the Niners had an early 10 nothing lead, Talanoa Hufanga, he's not, he's not even playing. Right. He he's retired? In, no, I think he's injured. I think oh, he's out for, yeah, he's, he's on IR two months ago. So, um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But look, the 49ers are can we just can I, I want I'm curious your opinion. Since for, now Florida has sports betting it's legal here. Yeah. Um the 49ers are favored in this game. So for all the things that we can sit here and say that we can't see the Chiefs losing, the San Francisco 49ers are two point favorites. Now they opened it two and a half. About I saw this on DraftKings, but eighty seven percent of the bets went to the Chiefs right away. Was, that was a number at least that they posted. Yeah, that's a smart bet. Yeah. So the line goes down to one. Now it's back up to two. I don't know, but the odds they, makers they always want to see. Well, they, they, want, they know where the bets are going to go, yeah. and it's their goal is always 50-50, get the bets. It's not to predict the game. or It's literally to get even amounts of money on both sides so that they can make money off the juice. Yeah. So, And I'm not talking about Kyle Juszczyk, <laughs> the juice. Um, His wife got a brand new the NFL, actually. She's been making all the merch. I, I, I don't know how long he's been with his wife. About 10 years ago, I remember seeing Juszczyk at a Kevin Nealon comedy show. So we know he has good taste in comedy. He got into his Mercedes. He was with a beautiful woman that I presume is still the woman he's 10 with. years ago? This, 10 year, this was in, yes, it was in Baltimore in 2014. He came into the league in 2013. I believe they drafted him the year after they won the Super Bowl. He's a, he's a Harvard guy, yeah. Juszczyk is an old man by football standards. Yes. He's yeah. 32. Yeah. But so 2014, he, 10 years ago. Yeah, don't, don't remind when me. You said 10 years ago, Royals. When you said 10 years ago, I was like, oh, yeah, uh, like 2009, 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that makes me well, want to throw yeah. up. Yeah, Juszczyk was a, a fourth rounder, but he, he's a Harvard guy. He's an Ivy Leaguer, smart guy. Um, but anyway, going back to what, you know, the juice, the juice, um, you know, but look, the odds makers are generally pretty, they don't set lines that are just completely crazy. I mean, it happens, but, um, the fact that the 49ers are favored and the fact that the 49ers went into the postseason is the heavy favorite, like you have to believe that they, of course they have a chance. We're not sitting here saying there's no way the 49ers can win. It's just, it just feels so different now. Because maybe a couple of weeks ago, we were like, oh, the Chiefs are not winning. They got to get past Baltimore and Buffalo, and it's not their year. And, they, and it's like now it's like, oh my God, Mahomes, no, he can't lose. He can't lose. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Didn't we just say that about, because I know we saw them win, but the 49ers, they, when they lost three in a row, under their bye, they came out and just annihilated Jacksonville. And I remember saying, like, they're, they're going to get on a serious roll now. And they did. They only lost one meaningful game the rest of the year, which was to the Ravens. And, I, I I like their, you know, I like their team in terms of the talent, but like, doesn't it feel like you we were talking about the those past most talented teams? They would oh, always play teams that were yeah. sexy and had bigger stars like the Randy Show and never won. Right, the Randy Moss year, the, the sixteen and zero year. Right, they were they didn't win a ring. They had Moss, yeah. which is crazy. Um, and He's never won a ring. He didn't. He was with the 49ers in the 2012 Super Bowl. I remember that. So he played in two Super Bowls. Which is weird. I, I saw that randomly about three years ago. And yeah. I was like, that doesn't sound right. I don't remember him at all. But, I mean, obviously he wasn't Randy Moss that we know and Not love. that Randy Moss. Yeah. He had a touchdown against the Pats that year, I remember. But he uh, he never won a ring. But the the Pats always seem to be playing these really talented teams, like the, yeah. the 01 Rams. Even the even the second Rams Super Bowl, even the Atlanta when they played oh, Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta had steamrolled its way through Seattle and Green Bay to get to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and the Patriots were kind of this more defensive, and they didn't have Gronk and twenty eight to three, and you know what happens? It just it feels like that's what's so scary about the Chiefs. They're not just this like sexy team with big playmakers that you can just punch them in the mouth and then they they're going to go away, right? Like the Cam Newton Panthers. But like that was the one Super Bowl I was like, 
I was 100% certain Denver was winning that. Because that, to me, that was what Carolina I remember that. It just felt like it, it too. I mean, Dayton yeah. coming out, you could, just, exactly. you could just kind of feel it. It was like, oh, the, this is the has no shot. Yeah. Right? yeah. And that was a close game. I mean, it was a close it game. Was I was 40 10, yeah. I remember it was because, I mean, I think one of the touchdowns, I think it was like, just putting the game right, away. right. It was, like, yeah. But I remember, like, when I think back on that Super Bowl. I'm like, that was a bad game. But I was like, no. Like, I'll watch highlights and I watch what goes on. I'm like, no, that was a good game. It was pretty close most of the way. And and obviously, Keenum with his not recovery of fumble, just making a business decision. Oh, as, yeah. As Dion would say, making a business decision. Um, he also said he wants. He said he would take the job in Atlanta. If he, if they need a starting quarterback, which I'm going to be honest, I think, I think he's not he's taking any job. Of or course, he, he can get right now. Yeah. Like uh, nobody's offering. He, he's right. going to go to them. He's doing the um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, There's never been a good, a really good Super Bowl where a defensive player was MVP. That's just what I'm thinking. Von Miller was yeah. MVP of that Super Bowl. I think yeah. that's the last time. Because that, that I remember taking our remember just. It was, it yeah. Was, well, that was Osweiler. Played, I want to say Osweiler played like yeah. half that year, too. Osweiler played a bunch of games. Man came in in relief in the last game of the regular yeah, season. I remember that. And they won. I think they came back and beat the Chargers. And then in the postseason, Manning just – he had one great scramble against New England in the championship game. And, mo- and otherwise, it was just a lot of efficient passes and letting the defense just pin yeah. its ears back. I mean, the de- that defense was – Incredible. Just it, I, I the no fly zone, yeah. yeah. Von Miller, DeMarcus Ware. He's to leave he's to leave in, in uh yeah, and the uh, like Danny Trevathan, the guys that just stepped up and had big years. But uh the forty nineers, yeah, I, I do wonder about their ability to be a great defense. It's just I don't know, nothing see the thing is Kansas City's defense is they really, really good. Struck, they got gashed in the Sweeney Bay on the ground. They got yeah. gassed again this week on the ground. Yeah. And they've come out on the right side. But Pacheco is just another breed. I mean, I know Gibbs is good. I know Montgomery is good. I know Dylan or was, was uh, what's his name? Aaron back? Jones. I guess. Aaron Jones. Yeah. He, back. he was back, right? Um, just Pacheco is, I mean, you watch Pacheco run and, and it's, you feel like he's going to put a crater in the ground. And he's yeah. just, he's pissed. I mean, anytime there's a crowd around him, it feels like he just squirts out. Yeah, and and finds his way out. Like they just can't stop him. And and San Francisco is their clear weakness. To me, feels like the run game. But and again, like they're kind of getting gashed all over. But they're finding ways to win. They are finding ways to win. And if you look at the Ravens game when they lost the 49ers lost with the four picks, I mean. They put up numbers. Like McCaffrey was fourteen for one hundred three in that game. Yeah. He had a 39 yard run. Kittle had seven for 126. We also should mention that Kittle did nothing on Sunday. He did yeah, he was nothing. Absent. He was absent and they yeah. put up 34 points. So there's like the takeaways. Only, the only thing can... of note is at the end of the game, the camera's on him and he starts like the sky cam. And he's yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and his buddy Greg Olson, obviously, in the studio. Right. Was, which so sad we're going to lose him for break. I know. That's I know. Disgusting. Greg Olson. I mean, so he'll. he'll Hopefully, Lance Olsen needs to go and replace Kirk Herb Street. And, and, oh my and God, Amazon. Al Michaels too. Cool. I'm fine. I'm still fine with that because he's a legend. Kirk, know, Kirk, is Kirk, Kirk is college. Kirk is college. great at college. He is fantastic, but he just he almost seems to like go through the motions. Yeah, he, he doesn't seem excited. Yeah, and I mean, I feel like if you can get someone who's excited, I feel like you'll get Al Michaels excited too. Because that's a part of it. I mean, you have to be able to you have to be able to bounce the energy off the guy next to you. You know, and I mean, when we do these podcasts in person, you can even tell there's a different energy, right? Just when we're yeah. in person, and and I think when you're on when you're calling a football game, you need to do the same thing. And yeah, Al Michaels doesn't have the energy, so Kirk doesn't have the energy, and it's just if they feed off each other. I feel like Greg Olson can come in there and just feed Al Michaels all that energy that old man needs. Right to, to get back into it, and I think we can have a great year. But yeah, don't listen to me. I mean, don't don't listen to me. No, I mean, I I would love if if you know if the Forty ers are going to win this game, I feel like they need to run Christian McCaffrey a lot because mm-hmm. this guy like, he always has big runs during the game. Always is going to have runs of 
20 plus. He is so, like, I don't care how tired you are now. You're in your 20th game, about to be in your 20th game this year. Mm -hmm. I feel like, and clearly, you know, Purdy can make plays and put up yards and have good receivers, but they need to get McCaffrey just, Mm -hmm. he needs to touch the ball 30 times in the Super Bowl. Whether it's you know combination run, running, I touched it twenty four times on Sunday, and um, you know obviously having Debo Samuel back is big. This team doesn't lose very often when Debo Samuel plays; they just don't. Uh, you know, they're not looking at eighty nine at anyone else either being now, right? Like no, tr- no, especially on the offensive line, like Trent Williams is really gay. I mean, I'm assuming really gay will play by the Super Bowl, um, but O'Manahue, that's you know really good pass rusher, made a huge play in the championship game um but i you know like the 49ers strength in their defense is their front and really their front seven mm-hmm. to me i i just they got to have a plan to be able to stop these receivers better they're just not doing it they you know fred warner is great Drake greenlaw is great they combine for 20 tackles but who in that secondary i mean i think got logan ryan and that guy want to ring with the pats that's a name i haven't heard in a long time yeah that really is yeah, that I mean, Traverius Ward, one tackle. I, I, I just I want to see like Steve Wilkes. We're talking about great head coaching camp, the job he did with the defense. Yeah, they got carved up in the first half, completely destroyed. They made some adjustments. They started getting some pressure on Goff, but if they play defense like they did in the first half against Detroit, they are going to get murdered in this game. We haven't even talked about. We gotta talk yeah, about we, we, we got to uh, we'll leave, yes. I mean, I don't even know what to say. Uh, heartbreak. I mean, it's, that's, again, that's what blinds me with this game. Um, but just, uh, it, it just unfathomable. Like, a collapse, I feel like, doesn't even define it. Because, like, the Atlanta Falcons in the Super Bowl was a collapse. Like, they're yeah. just, they're standing on their two feet, they're strong, and, and suddenly they all flat on their face. Yeah. I mean, this was, there's mismanagement at moments. Like, I can't, I don't really remember a specific moment in that Falcons. Well, Kyle Shanahan was the coordinator for the Falcons. Which, obviously, you could blame the play call, the offensive play calling part of it at that yeah. time, but you really can't point to moments in that. And this was just, like, ineptitude that, that contributed to a, yeah, just a, Meltdown. I mean, I think meltdown is more describe a better description of what this is because it's just it's like uh, uh, CJ Gardner Johnson waving the fans goodbye in the second quarter. Oh, like wow. and they caught caught national TV. Eminem flipping off the fans from the oh, suite. Yeah. I mean, just how many things were were they doing? I, I get. It's so hard to describe the amount of pain that I feel for the city of Detroit. Yeah, like holy shit, I'm. Just, I've been a part of a horrible collapse. I've been on the other side where they come back, 2013 Buffalo game against the Chiefs. Yeah. And I know both sides, but good Lord, I, don't, I still felt that might have been the worst I've ever felt about a non cold team yeah. ever. Yeah. Again, I think it really changed when they didn't kick the field goal to go up 27 10. And that then, the, yeah. yeah. And that lead was gone in the third quarter. It wasn't like chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. They went at the end. It was 17 points, pretty darn quick. I mean, the it was really like a touchdown, minutes. touchdown, like that. Yeah, right. It was, right. It was a, got the field goal, then the line turned it over, and then it was touchdown, fumble, touchdown, punt, field goal, turnover on their biggest mistake, touchdown. Lions got their touchdown to cover the spread, um, and then the Niners were able to run off the clock. So it was just um, – it was a collapse, yes, but what shocked me was just how the Niners were able to flip the switch. Yeah. And Purdy he just somehow made these plays with his legs. He had the one – I thought the best play of the day was the one where he got out of the sack and threw it to use check on the sideline. He yeah, the yeah. The that tip, was the, the yeah. best play. Because the one down the field was kind of lucky. It bounced. That you had great concentration. But Purdy, that was like a 20-yard switch, uh, you know, like shift. Yeah. By not getting the sack and getting the ball for a first down, I mean, he has shown a knack for coming back and winning, and that's great because he may need to do that on yeah. Super Bowl Sunday. Just wish we didn't have to wait two weeks for this game. I, I hate the dark week. God. I know. Well, especially the, the silly excuse that they give for the pro 
pro bowl now. I mean, oh. just what a trap. I mean, Gardner Minshew was a pro bowl. He, they announced him as a pro bowl quarterback. Right. And I mean, I knew the, pro, I knew the, the one thing, the thing about the MLB all-star game, they took away the, the juice that we were playing for oh, in the MLB yeah. all-star game, which I hate. Right. I did too. But you can't fake baseball. You cannot fake baseball. Somebody's going to pitch you, and you better try and, and hit that damn ball. Yeah. Like, you can't fake that. You, you got to try and hit it. You're going to try and hit a home run. Basketball, they can fake. I mean, what they've turned the NBA All-Star game into is just a joke. The, the team captains that they do. Yeah, it's terrible. Joke. The NHL, one, I think, is the best one, but they do, like, a tournament. Yeah. Which, still, I mean, that's – those guys seem like they're trying to win. They also do seem like they're trying to win. In the NFL, I understand the injury thing. But I would rather have a bunch of guys off now, and I at least get to see some guys try and play football. Like, try and play, and they – I love the uh, – they would do the same uniform, but they would do the different color helmet, you know, the their helmets. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You wear his Colts helmet. Right. It's like when uh, they used to do the, the All-Star, they would wear their uniforms. Right. Like, you would have the Yankees and Red Sox players playing for the same team. It was pretty cool. That was yeah. awesome. They just ruined it. I mean, it's just it, – Oh, oh, it's just one of the other, yet another get down there that we can sit here and bitch about for yeah. an hour. But it's, first of all, I hate it when they made it during the season. I like, I still like having something after the Super Bowl. I'm sure that's just, a nice little appetizer to, you know, or a nice little dessert, I guess. Yeah. Um, yes, and it was in Hawaii. There was something about watching that game, you know, it's like 6.30 on a Sunday. It's cold if we're up north. You're watching them play out in Hawaii, and it's just, it's lovely. It's lovely. And they're having fun. I understand it's an exhibition, but they used to play that game with some pride. And there were actually some really good Pro Bowls. There was one that was 55 to 52 in Vanderjet. Mike Vanderjet missed the field goal, of course, that, which then set up that he missed the field goal to tie the game against the Pats in the first game of the following season. So he well, tipped us he, off. Like he was, gonna, he was um, from, what, from what my dad told me, at least, he was like really, really good. And then he missed. He, he missed always missed one. in the postseason. I was yeah. at the Dolphins' last playoff win. He missed one in overtime that would have won the game. He had the miss. We well, had the miss in the Pro Bowl, if you want to count that. Yeah. He had the miss that would have tied the game against the Patriots in the opening Thursday night game in the 04 season. He had the horrible miss against the Steelers in the 05 wild card That's game. the one I think my dad kind of talks about. Yeah. Like, and, and some, that was kind of his moment. That was his like moment. Over. And and um, some kid that he teaches at a school or something, a kid was taunting him, and he allegedly like, grabbed the kid. This was years ago, but you know, so he, he was a jerk. Kid probably Vander deserved it. Kid maybe, probably deserved it. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, but let's get, let's get back on the Lions. Um, Dan Campbell also said, which I, I actually, the way the media reported this um, was wrong because I understand what he's saying here. He said, we will never, or this might have been our only shot. And people were taught they're trying to clown him for that. But mm. what he's saying is, this is the NFL. Like, yeah. Obviously, I would love to get back here next year. I'd love to win this game next year. But you never know. I mean, it's hard to get here as it is. We see how hard it is to, for a Super Bowl team to have a competent year the very next year. It's very, I mean, we haven't seen a repeat champion since the Patriots. We could possibly see it to. here. Yeah. We're about to. Um, but we actually haven't seen a repeat champion in 20-something years. So that's really hard to do. And, and I, I – don't agree on Dan, with Dan Campbell on a lot of things, but I, I agree with him. Um, but just, I mean, he's, he's going to have a lot of questions to answer, I think, this offseason. Um, he's not fired. I, I hope he doesn't get fired. I really hope he doesn't, even though, because I love his character. Yeah. And he's also, shockingly, one of the biggest analytics guys in the league. Like, I think the Lions and maybe the Rams, like, stats the most analytics people in, in the league. Um, which again, very big shocker. Like, yeah, I, I somebody somebody made the joke: Has Dan Campbell ever seen Moneyball or read Moneyball? And I was like, Does him watching the movie count? Because then, yes, he, he does. Um, I would just love to see Ben Johnson just take the reins from him, man. Like, take the reins for a lot of different things. Dan Campbell is a great head coach when it comes to team building. He gets those guys fired up. I mean, they, you know, winning that game against Minnesota when they were defeated and hadn't won a game a couple years ago. And they go out and win that game against Minnesota. Right. Last year, they know they're out and they're like, fuck you. 
we're still going to try and beat Green Bay and knock them out of the playoffs. And we did. And, and he gets them all the way here. And there were so many, like, questions about this Lions team. But he cannot. I mean, he cannot make those decisions. And I know, it, I know every coach has an ego thing. If I was a head coach, it would probably be an ego thing where I'd be like, man, I, I really don't want to give up those reins. But there becomes a point. You just – you have to say these outside guys have to look at this well because they left six points on the board. And I mean, the run play on that last drive. What the? Yeah, so that, that, I was just looking at an article that that's the one decision he wants back. The one where they had to burn that timeout. Which is. You're talking about the one because they would have. Even if they didn't get a touchdown, maybe they get a field goal and it's a seven point game. Yeah. But then they could have onside kick. Okay, but they don't get that. They have three timeouts. You can still they would have had the ball back, but when it was two, that cost them the game. Yeah, that was that was egregious. That was almost as bad as um, the the not kicking the field to tie the game. One better did apparently cash in seventy k because he had Jameson Williams score the first and last touchdowns, and he he threw and he, you know which, even that. I mean, you can question whether it was the right decision to go for a touchdown. There. Well, You're so yeah, close though, so. I don't know. I was saying in the moment, I was like, you have not gotten this twice yeah. already. You have, you have left six points on the board at this point in the game. Part of me was like, well, if you left six points, you might as well leave nine, right? Or or try and make it back. But I was like, you, the, the, the rational human being in me is like, third time is not going to be the charm in this situation. This is the NFC Championship. You're not going to leave it up to third time's a charm. We might as well see yeah, yeah. which obviously they did. But I would have kicked it, get the onside kick, and I would have also had my third time. That would, that would, have, been the, that would have been the big thing. I would have thrown the other. It, it's almost cruel in a way that that's the decision that worked out for Dan Campbell was that the, the, the touchdown that didn't even mean anything in the end. And I think, I mean, it's that that is the, the play calling style. We'll wrap up here in a few minutes. But that's the play calling style that you do at the end of the half. When right. you're saying time doesn't matter, or we have 40 seconds, we know we can run another play. Let's, and we're also decided we're going for it. Like that's, that's what you do. We say, we're going to run the ball on third down, short, see if we can get in the end zone, and we have to pass as an option as well. But the, at that end of game, when you need the ball back again, that yeah. is not what you do whatsoever. Right. I just I don't get the thought process. They like, should have learned something from watching that Texans Colts game. Like you throw on fourth down, only bad things seem to be happening. You know, run the ball like the way you get stuffed. I know, like we were saying, the Chiefs went for it on that fourth down. At least they ran it the way the Ravens stuffed them. But you ran the day of Pacheco on a fourth and inches. I don't think there's a better proposition than that. Yeah. Although Mahomes he always throw to Kelsey. I guess. The, but yeah. most teams run. Well, that, uh, speaking of that, the fourth down and. One or two early oh, in the game. Looked it up to, he had and he just like he was away. just kind of like, yeah, it, Kelsey's right there. Yeah. I'm just gonna throw it to him. And Kelsey, Kelsey, yeah. Kelsey did what he did. I mean, I, I want to say it was Kyle Hamilton, or maybe it was Van Dyke, was draped all over Kelsey. Right. And Kelsey just well, <laughs> Hamilton don't. was draped all over him for the touchdown. It just, I mean, Kelsey, Kelsey was you know, saved it all for this. Yeah. yeah. Um, whatever regular season, regular season, just get in. Yeah. Well, like I think. It was, Warriors like 500 right now. We're calling for. Uh, they're like, oh, just tear it down at the end of the year. It's like if you have Steph Curry, I don't care. Like maybe maybe Trevor Curry punching people will be a problem. But you know, yeah. besides that, I mean, Steph Curry is Steph Curry. He's found a way. He will yeah. always find a way. Yeah, he did it without Durant. Um, he could do it. But anyways, no basketball talk. I don't. I don't even know that. Much. Um. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, uh, the whole thing. Uh, any articles for you dropping on Draft America? Uh, I have a Next Super Bowl week. preview, so yeah. Super Bowl preview dropping on draftamerica.com. Check that out. Um, we will – I know you sent me your end-of-season awards, and I haven't posted that yet. We're going to post it the Monday after the Super Bowl because the other guy didn't get it to me, but he should be getting it to me by the end of this week. Uh, we've also added a couple of new writers as well, Dan Dan Campbell, that's the guy's name. Yeah. But he is an analytics guy as well. And then um, s s I still have to figure out his name. Stefano Diaz as well. So uh, he might be doing some more basketball content. But let us know.
lot of big things. Um, and we'll see you next week.